Hello again, welcome back to Asgard and welcome back to the Misty World Tutorial Spotlight Series. So today we're going to be talking about some really cool features, but before we get around to that, there's a couple things I want to make note of. Just kind of related to last episode, uh, first up, um, Liam, which is the you know the creator for the mod uh, mentioned on the Discord, you actually don't have to chunk load your latex pots. I never knew that. Um, they actually run on their own. And on that note, one thing I actually forgot to mention for the last episode is don't forget that whenever you tap those rubber trees, they will most likely die after yielding uh, their latex. Um, so that kind of is where you need to plant more uh, or go out and find more uh, rubber trees to get all your latex. Um, and then lastly, if we pop down into the mist, I had a request to kind of show what happens if you stay down in the mist too long. But you'll notice that as my intoxication goes up, I'm going to get lower and lower maximum health. I'm down to four hearts at the moment due to my intoxication. And it's going to keep going down the higher that it goes. You can see that I have constant effect weakness three, mining fatigue three, and slowness three. Um, and now I'm down to three hearts. So you can see it gets really, really bad. The longer you're down here, the worse the effects are going to become. So you want to make sure and try to keep that, um, you know, basically basically taken care of don't let it get too low um, now i think we've hit weakness mining fatigue and slowness four at this point uh, because i can barely move now we have blindness and things are getting really dire we have two hearts left and you can see from washing that off our health went up by one actually we still have the mind the weakness mining fatigue and slowness so um, i believe that may be tied to the to the intoxication and not the um the chemical uh, pollution level to be honest I've never gotten to this point I've never even gotten to where I get debuffs I usually take care of it no well, now I've got nausea <laughs> oh it's so bad like if you were to get your intoxication and your pollution up to like max you would just be like one shot to everything and sick all the time so as you can see lots of really bad things especially from the uh, intoxication Chemical pollution, not as bad, um, only really losing like maybe two hearts and being able to easily wash that off with soap. So not too bad, but the, the intoxication is fairly nasty. So anyways, what we're going to be covering today is a lot of kind of miscellaneous uh, features of the Between Lands. And one thing I want to point out is there is a variety of these old paintings. Um, there's actually an advancement if you get them all but they are just kind of unique paintings that you can find rarely while exploring. So uh, do keep an eye out for those, grab them if you see them. Um, it will take you probably a fairly long time to find them all. So just a heads up. Uh, the next thing I wanna talk about just really, really quick is if you craft a map, just a standard Minecraft map, uh, you're actually gonna have two different versions. There is one that is the kind of the above area um, where you have uh, you know your different climactic zones and stuff like that and then you can see the mist is just this white area now if we pop down here and we activate another map we are going to get one that is the lower area so there's two different variants there for the maps and depending on where you activate it you're going to get a different map so just something kind of neat uh, to mention next up let's talk about ceramic urns and clay urns um, let me grab just a few things here. If you make yourself some clay urns, which can be crafted just with any kind of clay as such, you smelt them into ceramic urns, then you can dye them, kind of like this, the urns that we saw in the world. Uh, so you can just add these into like a crafting grid and you can apply an item um, or just a dye. So we're just gonna start with magenta dye. See, I can make a, a magenta ceramic urn, um, which is going to behave I place it down just like a regular urn but then if I wanted to put kind of an overlay on this I can add another item or you can keep it as the standard kind of terracotta color if you so desire but you can pre-dye it uh, to get kind of a base color and then add patterns so you can see paper adds like a little border there and it's going to make it out of that lapis blue if you add in mulch it's going to give it kind of this almost fiery looking texture which is kind of cool uh, saltpeter is going to give it kind of these cracked veiny type texture. String will give it that little string bit that runs across there. If you add in bones, you're going to get that effect. 
uh, and then feathers are going to give you uh, kind of this effect here and once again you can place these down you can use them and if we place this back into a grid and say we wanted to add more dye to it you can't at this point unless you just recast it and then add your colors like that um, so you're going to have to re-dye it back to just kind of a generic uh, color before you can uh, do anything else with it oh and sticks sticks will give you that texture I almost forgot about them there down here so uh, sticks will give you that texture now next up I think I mentioned in the first episode if you break your trees uh, you know farther back you're going to have a better chance to get saplings um, you know trying to get as many basically it raids on how many connected leaf blocks there are to uh, these small sections so the more leaves that you have attached uh, the better chance you're going to have now one thing to note is uh, you have to use an axe to do this uh, don't be punching it don't use an axe break that off um, I still find that uh, saplings are super super rare um, and chances are they are not going to be really a renewable resource I don't I don't find um, I tend to have really bad luck with saplings but the same is true for me generally for dark oak um, I tend to run out of dark oak um, very very quickly unless I'm running like a fortune hoe to get uh, to get additional sapling drops but uh, so you can break that down uh, and get your saplings and if we take some of this wood we can take this and we can just right click it with an axe and we're going to be able to make carved wood and there is a ton of different types of carved wood they make awesome building materials they're really really unique I really really love the carved wood a lot uh, if you recall back on the what the Exoria series I used it a lot for building um, really cool textures and then if you take your axe and you right click again you'll be able to make stripped um, wood and um, each time that you cut a bit of this off you are going to get some mulch which we're going to talk about in the next episode when we talk about agriculture um, also a really neat feature is since we're talking about trees uh, if you kind of want to customize your tree or something you can take your axe and you can right click to change kind of the thickness and so we can go through and we can make uh, you know these these sections here are a bit thicker they are going to be based on the smallest size uh, that's connected so you can see I can't make that any bigger because um, it really couldn't get any larger coming out there but if I increase the size there I'm then going to be able to increase the size here and if I set it to that size I can bring it out fairly large um, all the way out so just something kind of neat there and you can do the same thing with the trunks and stuff so uh, just a heads up on that and we can adjust it make that like really small <laughs> and it is it is going to affect the entire tree which is kind of neat uh, so you can kind of add some customization if you have kind of some decorative trees around your base you can make those um, you know however thick you want them to be now also making stripped wood it also applies to the other sizes of wood so if you have trunks or branches you can right click that and strip it unfortunately you can't make carved versions but you can uh, strip those now since we're talking about trees let's also mention that uh, what's really cool is you can do things like this with your um, you know with your trunks and I can do this and that and then if I was to break this off you know I could bring it on over connect that in and do something like this if you like building this opens up of course a ton of possibilities for you uh, in things that you can do and of course with all the different types of wood that are available from the misty world there's just a whole lot that you can do with that and also a really cool thing to mention is the uh, it doesn't work with the trunks but if you have the branches and you walk into them they will behave like a ladder so you can make kind of like laddered sections uh, and use these to climb up as opposed to sticking you know single single block little ladders everywhere now on that same note of being able to place out blocks like that uh, you can also take the rocks that you get from mining the stone or just picking up on the ground you know right click to pick these up and what you can do is you can just right click on the ground and add this and you can just bring this around 
you can do like that and then like that and then we can do a corner bit there and then if I want it to be kind of a smaller segment I can click a little bit closer and do like that and then oops bring that around like so um, so I can kind of play with the corners a bit so I can do a corner um, you know kind of in this way or I can do a corner that comes out the full way and comes down just a lot of different freedom that you have with this unfortunately you can't place them you know vertically but uh, I'm not complaining just the fact that you could do all of this is just super nice um, and in addition if you have when you place like that if you place them like a second time you'll get slabs so you can quickly kind of slab out um, an area with uh, with just rocks so and then of course you couple this with the timber um, which can do kind of this you know the same thing here except in wood form and you know you have tons of possibilities with all the different wood types and stuff uh, that are available within the mod and then the mod does also add a mossy variant so there is that as well all really really cool and super useful now in addition another really cool thing is if you take rocks and you come over and you just shift right click you can place them on the ground uh, you'll notice they always go into the same spot there's a reason for that if we take and then we just right click you shift right click to place that the first time and then you just right click you can expand it out and add a little rock circle this is not just decorative if you take uh, some types you know some type of wood you can place out uh, four of those and make what's called a campfire with this campfire we can light this and it's gonna burn super nice right but it gets even cooler this is actually one of my favorite features one of my favorite features of the misty world this and of course the building the building blocks are just great between the carved wood and everything um, but if we take say some sticks we take some meat what we can do is shift right click around this you can place up to four of these and then you can take your meat and just place it around this campfire and it is going to uh, steadily cook and you'll notice it whenever it's cooked because it's going to take on that brown coloring uh, just like cooked meat would now in addition let's place out another campfire let's light this guy on fire if we take iron bars and we right click on there you can see it puts out a grate that we can use kind of like a little grill grate and we can place up to four pieces of food on that and cook our food that way and that works for like mushrooms or you know just whatever you want to cook whatever cookable food that you have uh, can be cooked on this uh, the same is also true for things like uh, if we were to take for example potatoes We make a little grill we can place those out uh, you can see that over here this meat is now cooked and we can just shift right click to pull that off and we got cooked barovog meat from that and you can see that's cooking now there we go and once again shift right click to pull that off um, and if I try to place down you know anything that's not cookable it's not going to place on there um, and something I've never tried I know there's some automation options I know that the furnace will emit a redstone signal based on the amount of heat that's in it which is kind of useful um, but I'm not sure if we can oh we can yeah it does feed in with a hopper but it shows up invisible uh, so you're not going to actually be able to see it uh, once it's placed down uh, and we can't place uh, we can't place a uh, campfire down on um, a hopper if you have something that allows you to pull things out like some kind of conduits or otherwise uh, chances are you could uh, probably automate that way as well since it does seem to read it as an inventory so um, the fires don't last a long time we can reignite these eventually yeah right there you're going to see they don't um, they don't stay lit very long but we can place more campfire logs it seems like we can just place them indefinitely though uh, so just just bear that in mind uh, but we can go ahead and get that cooking again probably wouldn't place more than like four though 
to be perfectly honest. Now, the last thing that we can do is if we make yet another campfire. Yes, there is more campfire things to cover. Place that out. And what we can do is we can take a cauldron and just right click it onto there. And now we can create stew. Uh, so what we're going to do, we're going to grab ourselves just a bucket of water. We're going to right click and you can see uh, there's this op this little menu here and you can set how many portions do you want to make. Do you want to make no portions? you want to make one, two, three, or four? Uh, you can also click this and it's just going to exit out of there for you. That option means something totally different here in a minute, but um, we're going to say we're going to make four portions. So what we can do is we can grab some ingredients. Let's grab some wolder meat. Let's get our bear vog meat, our uh, coral mushrooms, our sand mushrooms, some orange mushrooms. If you right click these you can see we kind of have a little menu here. Uh, right now it's not doing anything. So over here let's do a wolder meat stew. So we're just going to right click, right click, right click, right click into this. Um, now if I come over here and I just do wolder meat like once, you're going to notice that the points per portion are a whole lot lower because we're making four portions but we're only using one of those meats. So I've made a few different stews here. We have the Wilder Meat Stew and this Wilder Meat Stew. Um, and then back in here, you're gonna see that we have a stew that's mixed with bear vog, bear vog meat, Wilder Meat, potatoes, carrots, and we have some impurities in this one. We're gonna talk about impurities. Bear vog, potato, carrot, and orange mushroom. And then over here, we just have a mushroom stew. Uh, it's actually restoring nine and a half things of hunger. Uh, now, as far as how many ingredients you can put into it, it actually is dependent on, it seems like, what types of ingredients you're putting in and kind of the variety and things. You're able to put a lot more mushrooms in than you are shanks of meat, which does make sense. Um, and as far as impurities go, the way that works is if I was to put, let's add four carrots into this. So right now we're 100% carrots. Um, and then I add like maybe two potatoes in. Okay, then I add some orange mushrooms, some sand mushrooms. You can see right now we have no impurities, but as soon as I start adding a fifth ingredient in, coral mushroom. Let's add a bunch of that in. Now we have 9.4% in, uh, impurity. And that's because there's stuff in there that's not part of this. It's other things, but there's such a minute amount of the ingredient that they're just negligible. They're not part of the top four ingredients. So you can put as many things, as many different types of things in here as you want. Um, you can see it's not really going to affect the, the strength or anything like that. It's gonna be fine. But it's only going to show you the top four and then everything else is just kinda gonna be dumped into the impurity section. You're probably gonna see this a lot because a lot of your stews may consist of mushrooms and there is absolute tons of mushrooms uh, within the mod so you may have a big variety of them and just dump them all into a pot and start cooking now if we are to if we want to cook this we'll just light these campfires and let them uh, begin cooking now depending on the portion size if you're only making one or two portions it's going to cook a lot faster than making four portions because of course you have a lot more here that has to cook down but you're going to see a bar that begins to fill up here and as it cooks it will change colors um, into more of like a stew like Color. Okay, so this is just wrapping up and you can click this button here if you just want to dump everything out of it and start again uh, You can do that. So just a heads up like if I click this I just dump the entire pot out and I have an empty pot But if we come over uh, this is the one that we made that's just a bunch of mushrooms uh, We can bottle this up and you can use it in your uh, these glass bottles uh, the glass containers that I mentioned last episode so you can drink from this even when you have your ventilator mask on like your full ventilator mask you can drink out of these glass bottles so at this point making pottage super super useful and basically you have four um, meals in this one glass container and you can just take that and right and hold right click and you'll sip out of it um, and consume it um, over here we have uh, this one here and in addition to using our glass containers, we can use bowls and take this and we got four servings of pottage and it contains bear vog meat, wilder meat, potato and carrots from that one. Um, I personally like the glass containers if you have the rubber available, but of course rubber is kind of a pain uh, sometimes to farm up. 
Though next episode we will talk about kind of how to farm trees from Misty World uh, and make that a little bit easier for you. So if I cover my mouth up with a respirator, normally I'm going to get this, your mouth is covered by a respirator. But now if I have this pottage in our glass containers, I can just take that and I can drink it up. The ability to eat with the respirator on is great, but even more so the ability to carry four servings of pottage in a single, uh, in a single item. Um, also, I want to quickly show if you take uh, flower pots, you can plant down saplings, uh, mushrooms, and if you get the seeds from trees, you can plant those as well. So we have like a little snow tree uh, seed that's here. And next episode, we'll talk about actually harvesting those seeds and things. Yeah, I think I've covered everything. Oh, if you break campfires after you've burnt them, you will get ash. So that's another um, another source of ash for your, like as opposed to using the furnace. So, you know, maybe you're making food, you can get that ash. Um, if you want to remove these things, um, shift right click. When they're empty, you're not going to be able to do it when they're full. Uh, the same with the grates, and you will get back your iron bars from that. So really you can have like one campfire and just switch out things as needed. So next episode, we're going to cover agriculture, um, you know, growing crops, growing trees. And if we have time, I want to do the animals and stuff too. So taming animals, uh, using those skills that we talked about earlier on, uh, being able to ride and, and farm animals uh, if we have time next episode. But I think that covers everything that I wanted to cover uh, within this episode. So anyways, um, I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you did, as always, be sure and hit that like button. And go ahead and subscribe if you're not already. Stay updated with when new videos come out. And I hope to see you guys next time. So until then, as always, do take care. Stay safe. I'll see you guys then.